imagine being diagnosed with early stages of cancer, which is medically treatable, only to see it spread and become stage three and four that is hard to cure just because facilities closer to you have no capacity to treat the deadly disease and you cannot afford specialized treatment that is in Kenya's capital. Well, this is not just a story, but a reality for many residents of Wajir County who have resorted to herbal medicine for treatment. The county government admits that cancer is a menace and something must be done to save the many lives that are wasting away. And Oxycolia reports that despite the high numbers, causes of cancer in Wajir are yet to be determined. Few things are certain in the life of Abdurrahman Ali. Family that sustains him and cancer that has been wasting his life away. It's quite unfortunate that this is happening. Dr. Siwili Smite, a clinical oncologist, had assessed Ali a day before we met the 56-year-old resident of Wichir village in Wajer County. He had a huge um, uh, left shoulder uh, wound. Uh, stroke swelling and uh, he's, has, he's had it for a couple of years but the first time it was diagnosed was last year November he was diagnosed in November 2018 so a biopsy had to be taken from that site taken to the pathology lab where analysis was done and it was confirmed that it was a squamous cell carcinoma cancer did not just take away his health it also took away his livelihood as he quenches his thirst, his eyes fixed on a wheel cut he no longer uses, Ali narrates how lack of funds hampered his search for cancer treatment after the diagnosis. With no hope in sight, he ended up enlisting the help of a herbalist. <laughs> Dr. Swillis Mite was part of the HCG Cancer Center of Kenya team that conducted a two day free cancer screening exercise in Wajer town last weekend. She recommended that Ali seek specialized treatment in Nairobi. But the man from Wichir village says he would have followed the doctor's instructions to the latter, were it not for his financial state. The Nairobi-based oncologist has warned that the situation could worsen if urgent medical assistance is not given to him. For cancer of such a region, uh, it's likely to go to the lung, it's, class it's likely to go to the brain, it's likely to go to the bone, it can go to the liver, it can go to the abdomen, it can go anywhere. Okay, so the likelihood of spread is high and squamous cell carcinoma is generally are usually very aggressive. So I really hope that um, we can still salvage the situation as it is. This is quite unfortunate because for a squamous cell carcinoma, if it's early stage, it can be treated either using radiation therapy plus or minus chemotherapy. Now for his case, for lack of uh, finances, he's not able to access that. That was last year, November. It's now August, 10 months gap. If that was a probable early stage disease by that time, it's highly unlikely that it's still early stage disease at this time. It's probably now advanced to a stage three or four. 
Abdrahman Ali's case gives a bad reflection on the entire healthcare system in Kenya, which has been struggling to achieve universal healthcare status for over a decade now. According to the Asian Cost and Oncology Action Study conducted in 2012 and 2013, cancer patients with low income are five times more likely to die from the disease than high income patients. The progress of battling cancer in Wajer has not been slowed by poverty alone, but also by the fact that cancer treatment is not available anywhere in the northeastern county. For one to access cancer care, they would have to tackle a six-hour journey of 317.6 kilometers to Garissa town or 684.4 kilometers to the capital, Nairobi. The road is bumpy for the cancer patients. The use of air transport to Nairobi is too expensive for many. Flying to the capital costs 40,000 shillings per person for a return ticket. And that is a problem for a big percentage of Wajer's population. The road network will be very helpful, but still the distance is prohibitive. The incidence of throat cancer is almost double here compared to the national average. Indeed, the disease has left a trail of death in Wajer. But as we move through the corridors of Wajer Referral Hospital, we encounter Hassan Sadiq Sheikh, a throat cancer survivor. Taking advantage of the free cancer screening exercise, he has come for his annual review. <laughs> I'm actually uh, very glad that I was able to meet a cancer, also a fragile cancer survivor, five years down the line. The review finds him cancer free. There's no evidence of disease progression or even recurrence. He's well built, nutrition wise, he's doing fine. So, um, esophageal cancer, being that very aggressive cancer, it's a um, late form of presentation. Actually, from the global can data in 2018, it's the number one killer in Kenya. Esophageal is the cancer that if you get you have like a 90 percent chance that if you have esophageal cancer you're going to die but we are seeing a survivor five years down the line so these are some of the encouraging things that cancer is not a death sentence it is curable probably for his stage it was early stage disease and that is what i'm trying to emphasize on early stage cancer is curable okay early stage cancer is curable by the time cancer is in stage three and four then it becomes difficult to contain perhaps the reason why jerry county continues to register the highest number of death from esophageal or throat cancer hassan sheikh was forced to travel to nairobi for diagnosis and treatment because none of the facilities in the county have this capacity <laughs> Other common cancer cases in Wajer include colon cancer, breast and cervical cancer for women, and prostate cancer for men. We don't have the facilities right now. Until such a time, we have the clinic. 
Indeed, Wajiri is yet to get its priorities right as far as fighting cancer is concerned. But the county government is trying to change that storyline to have people screened so that the disease is discovered before. It's too late. The county health officials have trained their sites on setting up a cancer center. They want cancer-related death to decline. Ahmed Omer is the county chief officer in charge of medical services. We'll manage uh, where possible uh, what the county can do. Where we cannot uh, achieve anything much, then definitely we'll, we'll refer. Also, again, uh, it's a learning lesson for our county. What we need to purchase maybe going forward in terms of equipment, in terms of knowledge. With the number of cancer cases on the rise in Wajer County, the county government has put an emphasis on setting up a cancer center that will ensure early diagnosis of different types of cancer. Wajer is one of the counties that received cancer diagnosis and treatment equipment from the national government in 2014. But like in many of the devolved units, they have been lying idle, even as counties continue to pay millions of shillings monthly for the machines. There were no uh, doctors and other paramedics who could uh, interpret the, or, or read uh, the figures. Sometime last year we got some Cuban doctors and uh, one lady was a radio, radiologist and uh, she, she could uh, diagnose uh, diseases very fast. Unfortunately, because of security concerns, all the doctors, because of an incident in, in, in Mandera, there was a government uh, order to have all the doctors, uh, Cuban doctors, uh, to move back to Nairobi and elsewhere in uh, down Kenya. So was the ground hit hard? Yeah, we were really hit hard. But why is cancer on the rise in Wajer? There are a lot of issues which are associated with it. In the early days, we used to talk about alcohol, we used to talk about smoking, we used to talk about other carcinogenic things. Nowadays, there are 101 stories which are concerned with cancer, uh, uh, cancer, you know, the causes of cancer. Like many parts of the northeastern Kenya, claims of toxic waste dumping has been an issue of great concern for the people of Wajir. These uh, were buried uh, in a place between Wajia and Hadado, between Hadado and uh, Habaswen in the 80s and early 90s. And until recently, uh, these uh, explorations were taking place in a place called Arbajan. Many people are said to be suffering the harmful effects of this dumping in the region and in neighboring Somalia that happened during the oil exploration exercise in the 1980s. Where they were buried up to today, no grass grows. Even if there is a lot of water uh, in the area, grass does not grow. And uh, the, the water uh, that is, uh, you know, people drink in those areas are usually... Uh, you know, very bitter. Even though proper research on the predisposing factors in Wajir is yet to be conducted, leaders suspect that water could be a problem. Indeed, water is a challenge in Wajir and most residents end up drinking contaminated water. We had a total of 140 and 31 of those were either suspicious or positive. That is actually um, a high or a relatively high percentage Okay, out of 140 people who turn out, then you have 31 suspicious or positive cases. That is a worrying trend. And for Abdrahman Ali, he so wishes there was an answer to the cancer that has afflicted him and many others in Wajer. He says he has been sick for so long now, he almost forgets what it means to feel healthy. Enoxicolia, Citizen TV, Wajer.